Can the world change? Yes, it, it can happen. Can people change? Have we given up on people? Have we given up on some people? Have we become so exclusive in the church that somehow in our mind these people are not worth saving? These people are pushed off to the side. I served a church once, made me mad. I still say there 10 years. But made me mad because they would dismiss and say, we have no business being down in the trailer park. You know how those trailer park people are. And I said, no, how are those trailer park people? I didn't tell them my mother and father were currently living in a trailer down in Florida. I didn't tell them that. Well, you know how they are. They're, they're transients. They're in and out. They're not quite stable. Their home life isn't good. And I said, then where does the church need to be? We have written off a lot of people who are not maybe as educated. They don't smell good. They don't dress well. They live in a bad part of town. Some have said, I hope incorrectly, the church has abandoned the poor. I hope that isn't right. Because I believe these early Christians looked at the world sustained by God with all that they might do and need to do and constantly said to them, it can happen. And they did it. As God empowered them to do. For you see, they experienced the risen Christ, the power of God. They didn't get lazy. They knew that they needed to do this. Just to be the people that God asked them to be. Verse 46. Uh, and, uh, every day, they continued to meet together in the courts, in the temple court. They were a worshiping congregation of a church. I hope, I hope that we have become lazy in our getting together on the Sabbath day. There was a statistic, this was several years ago, that on any given Sunday, about one-third of Christians are actually in their church. I don't know where the other two-thirds are. Not everybody can be saved. Not everybody can be on vacation. Isn't that, isn't that an indictment against the church? It's when the church becomes lazy. It's when the church becomes apathetic. And the evil powers of the world, other things began to take over. God, I believe, put the church, it wasn't by accident, but by design, I believe, put the church in the midst of culture. Not always to be easy. The church is not perfect. It is not perfect. We do something well. Other things we do not do well. We are late in many ways. Again, I love the Christian umbrella. But together, every Sabbath, the worship God and the culture of all it. And what is it that drives these people to come together to give up their time and effort and energy and money to cause things to happen, to go, to organize themselves and say, they first began to say, let us go and take care of the orphans. Let us go and take care of the poor. The first mission projects of the early church. Because I constantly think they said, it can happen. God empowered them through this prayer, through this study, and through coming together in worship. Empowered them to be the people of God, to be the change agents, if you will, in the culture. We are needed, sorely needed, in the life of the world. People are hurting. People are getting lost. They can't find their way back. Values and morality seem to be slipping daily. And I believe part of this, most of this, comes from not being God-centered and not having some people of God be that poor and be that example. It was then those who lived it by deed and word that made an impact. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts. I'm finishing up verse 46, getting ready to go into verse 47. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. It is not our task just to do things so people will like us. I think if we do the work of God, there will be some people who won't like us. But the majority of people's hearts will be stirred. And they'll come. 
the end of that verse 47, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Old-fashioned term, we don't even like to say it out loud, saved. Because that might mean I'm not saved, I'm not perfect, I don't have it together, I'm not cool. But the word saved means that we're not cool if we live without God. And because of all these things of worshiping and the studying and doing signs and wonders the best they could, helping one another, organizing for ministry, that the church became a change agent in the world. And without it, I think we'd be much more barbaric than we are today. The civility has come from the church. Morals and values and home life has come from that which the church has tried to teach and to lead. God is still speaking. Christ is still speaking to the church of visions about who we are and where we are to go. It is we who either stop worshiping and stop praying and stop studying, don't see it, that we get lost in our own little troubles, our own problems, and we grow inward, and when we grow inward and backward, then we are to fail. The church has always been and always should be, always will be, as far as I'm concerned, forward thinking. And when we do that, the Lord will add many to our number of those who are being saved. Can everyone be saved? The answer is yes. It can happen. Those people we have dismissed, it can happen. That's what God says. It can happen. Oh, I can't always make people go to church. All I can do is show them what it means for me as a Christian person. How it's changed my life. I think I've used this phrase before. You can't lead a horse to water. Right? You can't make him drink that boy. You can make him thirsty. And then he'll want to go. And he'll want to drink. We do that. We do that in our culture right now. You hear about the new TV? I just want no. What size is it? I can't believe it. Oh, I've got one in 60 inches. And of course, I talked to my brother. This is a true story. He said, I got one in 65 inches. Yeah. We tell people what's going on in our lives. And we share what brings us important. Why can't we do that with faith and church? People can be renewed redeemed, let me use the old-fashioned word, saved. Because we're going to answer the question, are we not? Can this happen? And our answer is, it can happen. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the church. It is a great fellowship. It is uh, our downfall if we don't participate in it. It's up to us. We can make those decisions. I like that about the church, oh God. I like that. We're not, we're not going to be hounded. We're not going to be put down. It is our own free will. And when we see those round about us who simply have a, a certain step to them, a certain air of confidence, that somehow even in the midst of their own troubles, they're in prayer. There's meaning and purpose to all that they may do. They see tomorrow as a hope and a promise. I want that. Other people will say, we also want that. And then Lord, help us to be ready. When those who come to us and say, how do you do it? How do you get through another day? I know you've got problems. What is it that gives you strength and character? Because Lord, they will come. And then we may be able to reply, it is my belief in God. It is my faith and walk with Christ. It is the spirit within me in my very core that helps me be this woman, this man that you created me to be. No more, no less. Be with us, O Lord, as we gather on this holy Sabbath day. We, your church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.